Facebook for more on this. We're now joined by our UK correspondent, Natalie Powell. Good evening, Natalie. From these indicative votes that have just been chosen, there are eight of them, as I've just said. They range from anything from a no deal to a customs union to a Norway-style arrangement. And indeed, this idea of a second referendum or a people's vote is certainly on the table. But so is revoking Article 50, which essentially means cancelling Brexit all together. And an increased police presence is certainly something that we've seen here on the streets of Manchester, but it's also likely to continue, Hari, not just here in Manchester, but across the UK, of course, with the UK government now increasing the terror threat level to critical. That's its highest level. Barbershops are one of those businesses filling newly vacant high street spaces. In London, these barbershops have seen more growth than anywhere else in the UK. In the past five years, there's been a 31% net increase of them in the capital to 527 stores. Male grooming is one of the UK's fastest growing retail sectors, with experts in the industry saying that men are taking more care of themselves than ever before, and they're looking for a more bespoke service, which is why they're opting for barbershops like this over the hairdressers. Gary makes money by selling The Big Issue, a magazine set up to help the homeless. His companion is Lola. Gary has spent many years either living on the street or in hostels. He's currently in temporary accommodation, but in January that could change again. I've just been given an eviction notice through no fault of my own. Peter Ashby's mother, Ilse, first came to the UK from Germany in the 1930s to work as a nanny. By 1936, her Jewish heritage family told her not to return. As a result of that, taking a very hard line, the biggest sanction imposed by the UK government here is that 23 diplomats, Russian diplomats, are going to be expelled from the UK. They've been given a week to pack their bags and leave. And this is the biggest expulsion of uh, Russians from the UK in 30 years. Other sanctions include checks on flights, including customs flights and private flights, the potential freezing of Russian state assets if they are deemed a threat to the UK and most publicly of all is the fact that not one single UK minister or indeed member of the royal family are going to attend the UEFA Football World Cup which takes place in Russia in just a few months time. Our correspondent Natalie Powell joins us from London. Natalie it's all about amendments isn't it tomorrow? Talk us through it. It certainly is. In fact, this is quite a significant step for Brexit because this is an opportunity for MPs to put forward really what type of Brexit they want to see and they're doing it through these amendments. One of the things that you have concerns about is the fact that on top levels of rugby there haven't been those openly gay players. Um, is this something that you see happening in the future though? Absolutely. I think sorry yesterday with their announcement. They've definitely paved the way. Look, we understand the continent that we live in. We understand the country that we live in and we understand the constitution that we're all protected by so it's definitely a step in the right direction but we look forward to continuing the journey and seeing where it takes us. We wish you all the best of luck for the tournament and you're playing later I understand as well so tune in for that at about uh, half past one I believe the Josie Cats will be playing the Misfits. And I have to mention the B word Brexit. <laughs> Any concerns over that going forward? I mean currently it's business as usual for us. Yeah? Nothing had happened so far. We even had last year quite a tremendous result here in our home market, plus 25% in the UK, which is great.